If you ever ask yourself, what is the difference between a short sale and a deed in lieu of foreclosure, you come to the right place because the answer may not be what you expected. Hi, I'm Don Thornton. I'm called the short sale guy. I've been doing short sale investing here in Florida and now nationwide for almost 20 years. And I know probably all there is to know about short sales, deed in lieu of foreclosure, or anything else you would need in the, under these uh, uh, subjects. So let's uh, talk about it. Uh, in this video, I'm going to tell you about what a short sale is. Then I'm going to explain to you what a deed in lieu of foreclosure is. And then I'm going to tell you which one to avoid at all costs. And let me tell you, you're going to want to hang around for that. So what is a short sale? A short sale is basically when a homeowner owes more than what the property is worth. For example, if let's say that the property is only worth $150,000, but the homeowner owes $180,000, then the homeowner is basically $30,000 upside down or underwater or has $30,000 negative equity. It depends on what jargon you use. I prefer upside down. That's what I grew up with. That's what I, what I use. So that means that the homeowner cannot sell the property with a full payoff. Because let's think about it. Why would why would the homeowner want to? Why would any buyer want to do that? If if all the comps in the area are showing one hundred fifty thousand, if all the the home homes are selling for one hundred fifty thousand dollars, then what buyer in his right mind is going to offer one hundred eighty thousand dollars just to get the homeowner out of a bad situation and get a full payoff? It's not going to happen. So about 30, 40 years ago, not really sure what exact date it was, but the mortgage companies decided to offer homeowners in upside down houses an alternative to just letting it go to foreclosure auction and basically just taking the credit consequences. And, you know, it's been, been, been a, very, a very bad thing. Now, before you think to yourself that, well, well, what generous institutions these banks are, they're going to help out the homeowners. Uh, no, they did it for their own self-interest because they figured out that they're in the money lending business. They're not in the business of owning real estate. They don't want to own real estate. If that's, if, think about it. If that was the case, why in the world would they not have huge portfolios of foreclosure houses that they own and now rent out? They don't want to do that. It's not their primary purpose. They don't want it. But they figured out that if they uh, take the property back at a foreclosure auction, they take it as a bank-owned property or as a real estate-owned property, REO, then that would mean that they have to have all these holding costs. They have to you know, spend money they don't want to spend, hire a realtor, put it out there. They figured out that if they just uh, let a buyer like myself, my company buys short sales all over the country, if they let a buyer like myself negotiate with them to buy, to to be able to buy it with a less than full payoff, which that's what it means, a short sale means they're gonna, it's gonna be short the full payoff, then they will get rid of the property more quickly, get rid of the mortgage more quickly, and they won't have any additional cost. And their statistical apartments have basically figured out that they, they mitigate their losses better with a short sale than they do with letting it go to foreclosure auction. And so it's also very attractive for the homeowner because the homeowner doesn't pay any closing costs, doesn't pay any costs at all. The homeowner gets uh, any mortgage amount left over after the sale of the property is written off and forgiven. So it's a great deal for the, for the homeowner. And so basically in this scenario, if, if the homeowner owed um, $180,000 and it sold for $150,000, there's $30,000 left over then that would be forgiven and the homeowner would not owe that anymore. And it's much less of a ding on their credit. So that is a good deal for all, all parties involved. Okay, so I want to just let you, if you find this interesting, if you think that this is something that is, is valuable to you, I do these videos all the time. I really, my mission is education. I want to educate homeowners. I want to educate other investors, anybody who's interested in, um, distressed sellers and how to help them and how to also make money as investors or how to be a better real estate agent uh, by doing uh, getting uh, foreclosure listings or whatever. If you like this uh, content I'm providing, I'd love for you to be able to you know go down and hit the button, the subscribe button, and get notifications. That way, when when I a new video comes out. Ding! It's going to hit, and you're going to be able to um, be instantly notified, and you can watch the, the next video. So, what is a deed in lieu of foreclosure? 
Basically, what that means is the bank will agree with the homeowner that they will stop the foreclosure. The foreclosure auction will not happen. And uh, basically, the homeowner will sign a deed over to the bank. Because this is something that a lot of uh, people don't understand. They think that because the bank has the mortgage and the mortgage is tied to the property because the property is the collateral for the mortgage that they provided you when you bought the property, they think that the bank, if, they, if the homeowner stops making payments, they think the bank already owns it. Well, they don't. The only way you can transfer ownership in with a, with a real estate property, house, business, doesn't matter, is a deed of some sort that transfers ownership. Now that can be a warranty deed when you just sell the property and that's it. And you know, in a, in a straight sale, it could be a quick claim deed. If you just, you know what, I just want to quick claim it out to somebody and that transfers ownership. If it goes to foreclosure auction, uh, then you, the person who buys the property or the an entity that buys the property gets a certificate of title, which is for all, for all, inten for all intents and purposes, a deed. So in order for the homeowner, the homeowner just, I hear this all the time in my investing career, a homeowner says, well, I'll just leave the keys on the counter and the bank can take it back. Well, the bank legally cannot take it back that way. You have to sign a deed of some kind for the bank or whoever you want to deed the property to, to get ownership of the property. That deed isn't recorded with the local county, county recorder's office, clerk of court, whichever your state uh, rules or laws apply. And so a deed in lieu of foreclosures where the bank says, you give us a deed and we'll stop the foreclosure. And that's what that is. Okay. So um, is this, uh, hopefully you've gained some uh, knowledge of now what a deed in lieu of foreclosure is and what a short sale is and what the difference is between them. And I'd love it if you have any kind of comments about it, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to interact with my with my viewers and, and people who subscribe to me because I'd love to give advice. I mean, my gosh, I teach uh, beginning investors. I teach seminars to homeowners about how to get, how to what their choices are when they're approaching foreclosure or if they're in foreclosure. Love to engage with my people. So please leave a comment down, down there. And I'd love to talk to you more about it. Now, here's the final thing we're going to talk about is which is better and what is the one you should avoid at all cost. And I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to, un, you know, undo the bow here and, and, and open the present up and show you right now. Don't ever do a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Oh, it's terrible. Deed in lieu of foreclosure is the worst thing you can do. And why is that? Because it's considered a foreclosure on your, on your credit report. I have had a mortgage license in Florida for a number of years. I can tell you that from a credit point of view, a deed in lieu of foreclosure is considered a foreclosure. So if you think you're going to get any credit advantages by doing a deed in lieu of, for, uh, lieu of foreclosure, you're not. It's bad. You are in jail for seven years. Seven years you will not be able to uh, get, qualify for a conventional mortgage. And here's the even worse news. It may even be longer than seven years. You know why? Because the, the, the mortgage, your mortgage that's in foreclosure is not closed out officially until it's paid off or at least partially paid off. So what's the bank going to do? They're going to get the property and they're going to throw it out. Oh, they're going to hire a, a real, real estate agent. They're going to throw it out there on the market. They're going to put it high. They want to try to get as much money as they can. So, they're, so that property could sit there. Folks, I have seen houses that, that the bank has taken back in deed in lieu of foreclosure. They sat for two, three, five years. And so all that time, the, the homeowner's mortgage is not closed out. That seven years to qualify for a conventional mortgage could easily turn into nine, 10, 12. So it gives you no advantage at all. And I hear a lot of homeowners say, well, at least you're gonna give me cash for keys. You're gonna give me money. If I, if I need the property over to them, they're gonna give me some money, three, $5,000, and they're gonna help me, you know, to help me with my moving expenses. And I would say to you, if they're gonna offer that in a deed and lieu, they're gonna offer it to you in short sale, okay? Short sale is by far the best way to get out from under a bad situation. Why? Because you can qualify for a conventional mortgage two years after your uh, short sale is closed. Second of all, it's done. It's out of your hair. You don't have to worry about the mortgage being out there zombie land for two, three, five years, like with deed in lieu of foreclosure, because once that, once that closes and, and the, the new owner owns it, your mortgage is done. It's canceled out. Any mortgage amount that's not paid off is written off and forgiven. By far, it is the best way 
to get out from under a bad situation. So if you're looking at the difference between a short sale and a deed in lieu of foreclosure, I beg you, beg you, do a short sale. And you know what? My company does short sales all over the country. Now go to the description of my YouTube video below and you'll see a link, some information for um, homeowners. If you're in that situation, you're contemplating which should it be, should it be a short sale or deed in lieu of foreclosure, please reach out to me and I can I can you know talk to you and give you the best options. Also, there are some uh, educational um, uh, material that you have that I could I could show you in, in the description. Check it out. Go to my website and uh, reach out to me. And most importantly, I want to talk to you. Okay, so reach out to me and I will call you personally. You can call me personally and we can discuss what's going on. If you are an investor or if you're a real estate agent and you want to learn more about how to, how to work in foreclosures and short sales and so forth, I can help you. I train other investors. I train real estate agents on how to be able to work with clients, how to find these types of listings, how to find these types of clients, how to, how to work with me to do short sales and joint venture and open up a whole new income stream for you to be able to help people out. So you're doing a good thing. You're, you're, you're gonna make money, but you're helping people out of a bad situation. You can be the hero. And that's the most important thing. So I wanna thank you again for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Thank you.